Hello lovelies, it's Sarcasm the Sickness, and I am bringing another speed drawing to you, and today I am drawing the ambipom that I am now using in my current banner and icon. So, if you guys didn't notice, those have been updated, so that's good, that's good, because those definitely needed to be freshened up after Halloween and all that, and um, I'm probably going to obsessively change it again come December, make it all Christmassy or something, but for now we're just going to chill with this, and this is, and this is, I'm a lot happier with this. Um, before I roll into what I want to talk about today, I do want to mention that I kind of want to rename, or not rename, but give an actual real name to my speed drawing series and, I don't know, kind of make it feel like it's more of an actual series. Um, so if you have any ideas, you know, drop them into the comment section below. I would really appreciate that. I've already asked on Twitter. And I did get some good responses, but I haven't really settled on anything yet, so I just kind of want to extend that invitation to the rest of you on on YouTube here who aren't following my Twitter, obviously. Um, or maybe who are following my Twitter but just didn't see that earlier, but you know, just whatever. If you have any ideas, just let me know, because that'd be great. Thank you! Anyway, today I want to, I want to tell you guys a story. I want to, I, I want to tell you guys a story about about little 8th grade me, little 8th grade me, and this story is called The Day I Learned How to Stand Up for What I Believe In. Um, it's a really, it's not a creative title, but at least it gives you an idea of what's happening in this story. <laughs> anyway, that was talk that was terrible, but anyway, um, in 8th grade, you know, a lot of things change, a lot of things change, and, um, let me, I guess let me lay out the situation. I, in 8th grade, I had three I had two main friends and then like kind of like secondary friends from there that I also talk like spoke to and were part of our group but I wasn't really as close with um, and basically all of them hated me or at least it seemed that way because I was kind of like I guess I was kind of considered like the runt of the group I first of all you know of all of us girls I was the one who was the least developed I suppose and um, that would, that being kind of like mentally and physically, I suppose. Maybe you know what you know what. Okay, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more credit than that. Probably not mentally. All right, I was probably a little bit more mature in that respect. Um. Anyway, you know, I was just the one that was always picked on. I was I was the one who's you know invited last to things or not invited at all. I was the one who, you know, was the butt of all the jokes, and it was just not a it was not a happy place to be. It never was. Um. But these were the only people that hung out with me because they were actually hated even more by like the rest of the class. So, like that, see, that's, that's the situation I'm in. I was the person that everybody hated in, like, you know, I was in a group that everybody hated me in, but that group that I was in was hated by everybody else. So I was literally like the bottom of the barrel. Like I was the bottom of the food chain of our class. It was absolutely terrible. Um, but I, st but these, like I said, these are the only people that would talk to me, really. So I guess there was still some kind of attachment or something, or maybe just a sense of human decency, when I found out that one of them, one of the main two that I had been friends with since like third grade, um, had started to experiment. Of course, you know, in eighth grade, I really knew nothing about like. I like we had just started having like health class and stuff and we were talking about like like drugs, sex and alcohol and all that crap. And um and at first she was talking about like sex stuff and to be honest, I at that point in my life I had no idea about any of that stuff, so I really didn't understand like most of what she was talking about. So it didn't really concern me. It made me it just made me uncomfortable really. Um but I didn't, I didn't really, it kind of went under my notice just because I didn't understand fully what she was even referring to. Um, but I did understand when she said she had started experimenting with drugs. Um, and obviously I knew that that was, that was wrong. That was not a good thing. We're in eighth grade. We should not be experimenting with drugs and sex. All right. Like, just come on. Like, we're still little kids. You know what? I would even cons I would go as far as to consider a ninth grader a little kid. Tenth grade, uh, that's a little. Actually, you know what? Tenth graders are little kids too. Sorry to all you people that I'm now calling small children, but you still have a lot to learn. And in eighth grade, you definitely still have a lot to learn. And that is not the time to be experimenting with literally illegal things. Literally illegal things. You're not supposed to be doing either of those things. No, stop. 
to... So, 8th grade me, uh, hated among everybody, but still, I guess, like, a caring person, even in my situation, decided I've got to do something about this. So I talked to my mom, like, a couple, maybe like a couple, probably like a week or two later, like, after I, she had been talking about it for for a little, a little bit of time now. And I was like, Mom, what do I do? And she's like, look, if you really care, then you need to talk to the school about it because there's really nothing I can do. I can call her right now, but she, like, I can call her parents right now, but they're not going to believe me. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll do it, I'll do it. And, um, you know, my mom didn't really, like, like, stress, like, oh, you have to do it, it's the moral thing to do. She just said, if you care, you know, like, if that's what you believe in, then, then you know what to do, kind of thing. She just gave me the option. She didn't tell me, like, you have to do this. So, I guess I decided to do it, because I went to my guidance counselor and and spoke about it with her, you know, like, I'm concerned. She says she's been talking about, you know, she says she's been doing drugs and stuff, and, you know, that's not right, and we've, you know, learning about it in health class and blah, 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 you know, and they're like, all right, we'll look into it, and we'll, you know, contact her parents and stuff. Thank you so much, and we will keep this between you and I. Apparently, <laughs> I literally don't know how this happened, but, um... You know, it was like two days later, it was like two days later, and, um, somehow, or like one of my other friends came up to me and said, she knows, I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, she knows you ratted, and I'm like, what the hell are you, are you, are you serious? And somehow it got out that I had been the one who told, like, you know, like her parents are called like that night or whatever, maybe the next day, and she was all kinds of upset about it. And, you know, like, she, of course, was talking about it with us, and, you know, I was just like, wow, you know, like, you know, like, just sitting there, like, pretending like it wasn't me who told, and just like, just like, oh my god, like, wow, what the heck? And, you know, they didn't, it, it wasn't one of those things where she was like, oh, I'm gonna find out who did it, like, it was just, like, maybe she assumed that, the, that like, teachers or something had overheard, but, um... You know, she's like, I had to, like, argue with my mom for, like, three hours, blah, 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 blah. But apparently her parents didn't believe that she was actually on drugs because she was an only child. It's one of those things. It's like, my daughter is perfect in every way. How could she ever do something bad like that? And so, you know, whatever. Just, just, whatever. Um, <laughs> and apparently, yeah, apparently, like, two days later, she found out that it was me. And so, you know, I'm just at my locker trying to get ready to go home. Um, and I feel a foot collide, collide with my back and kick me into my locker. Um, and I don't even get the chance to like turn around and confront her by the time she's walked away already. But, um, it was when I, when I actually like collected myself and got out of the school, she and a couple other people from our friend group, and I, obviously I say friend group very loosely, um, were standing outside the school, shouting at me, yelling at me that, you know, that they're going to kill me, and that, you know, they're going to beat me up, and, you know, how could I do that? Like, like you're such a, you know, like all kinds of horrible curse words and everything towards me. Um, and luckily at the time, I did have two... Well, I didn't really realize at the time that they were friends, but they definitely were. They were two male friends who, you know, who one, one stood on my left and the other stood on my right and they walked me to, um, to, or like, like away from the school. They were like, like, here, we got you. Don't worry about it. You know, like, they're not gonna, like, they were bigger dudes. It was like, they weren't gonna, these girls weren't gonna come and try to like, like knock down these two, these two kids. Like, this wasn't gonna happen. Um, so, you know, we walk past the, they take me past the school and they're like, all right, you should be fine now. You know, just, you're all right. And I'm like, I'll be fine. You know, I was like really shaken up though, obviously. Um, but uh, my teacher for, or my ex-teacher, I guess, like she was my seventh grade science teacher, noticed me looking very distressed. And she's like, hey, you're all right. And, you know, like I quickly explained the situation and like, you know, it was basically like in tears over it and everything. Obviously that's it's, it's a little traumatizing, it's a little scary. She's like, all right, all right, all right, let's, let's go back into the school. And it was, part of it was because like some of these girls had to walk the same direction as me to go home, and it just wasn't gonna be a safe situation in general. Um, so she took me back into the school, and uh, we waited for my mom to come by and get me. 
Um, but like the next day at school, uh, I didn't like they. My mom took me immediately to the office to talk with like the principal or the vice principal um, to figure out like how they were going to keep me safe during the day because literally like like my dad and mom. I guess my dad had saved um, saved their information. There was one time that I had a birthday party and they went on like. Remember, do you? I don't know if you guys remember Zanga, which was like pre MySpace, which was obviously pre Facebook. So this is, Zanga is so old, but it was like an old social media network kind of thing, and uh, they had logged into that on on my dad's computer, and he actually saved their their information so that he could go onto it and just check up on things every once in a while. I guess he was concerned. Um, they never really thought they were good influences on me anyway, so I get it. But uh, yeah, they logged onto there and like there was all kinds of death threats like, oh my god, are we gonna kill her? You know, like and like there were literal there were literal plans. There were literal plans on how to kill me. They they threatened to kill my cat. They literally threatened to kill my cat online. I didn't have a Zenga. I didn't have any of that crap. And they were threatening to kill my freaking cat. Hello? So <laughs> my dad printed that out and sent that with my mom you know, when she took me to the office and was like, look, her life could literally be in danger, like, or at least her safety, you know, maybe not life, because they're, I mean, come on, we're in eighth grade, but like, her safety can be in, is in danger here, and what are you going to do about it? And the, the freaking vice principal just didn't give a crap, he was just like, well, it's her fault for, you know, for letting it get out, and it's like, she didn't do that, like, I literally, like, obviously, like, why would I do that to myself? Why would I incriminate myself and let them know that I was the one who ratted? Like, come on. And this guy was being just such a... Such a word that I can't even say. I just... I, oh my god. He was such a jerk. And he was literally, like, one of the worst faculty members I'd ever met in my entire life. I hate him. I don't hate him, but he was pretty awful. Um, and my mom just sat there for, like, the longest time. Like, are you serious right now? Are you literally serious? You're not going to protect my daughter because you think it's her fault that she... You know, like... Like, like there were li there was literal proof. There was literal proof right in front of his face that th I could be in danger, and he refused to do anything about it. I was like, like it was terrifying. I didn't know what to do. I was I was like crying in the office because I didn't know what to do. I was like, what am I like? Do I just go home? Do I just go home for a few days and hope this whole thing blows over? Like, but thankfully, my parents were friends with my principal, and my mom eventually insisted like get the principal in here right now because I need to talk to him because this is absolute like she 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 literally said it was absolute bullshit like this like I we're not dealing with this right now get the principal in here and he came in there and he was an amazing guy he was really great um and like he he you know listened to my mom and saw me obviously distressed and looked at the papers and just like all right we need to take care of this right now like we literally need to take care of this right now don't send it to class bring those girls down here and talk to them because we can't have this happen and he immediately took action on it which I'm so thankful for because I would have never felt safe going to class and just like hoping that everything was gonna be okay so I went to class while they took the girls down to like some kind of meeting room or whatever um, and they spoke with them I guess and then eventually they called me down from like down from class to the office again and again I had to face this stupid vice principal that I just couldn't stand and he told me that you know that they were staging some kind of like intervention they were just like you know they were in the room and they had talked to them and everything's gonna be okay and they promised that they're not you know that everything's fine and they they just want to be friends again and I'm sitting there terrified I'm like are you serious you actually freaking believe them they literally threatened to kill me and my cat online are you serious right now and like of course I was I was still timid I was still timid and I didn't I didn't express these fears I just kind of like like just said like I don't want to go in there like I don't I don't want to go in there but they they had me go in there they didn't have a teacher in there they didn't have an adult in there at all and luckily nothing did happen they didn't try to hurt me um, I don't know if they actually really meant the friendship that they extended towards me because I know I definitely didn't mean it when I you know said that everything was cool because I was terrified I was absolutely terrified and I guess that's what kind of forced me to 
and just play along with everything like haha yeah I'm sorry and everything's fine now but um in the end I don't regret doing it I don't regret you know standing up for what I believe in which is I guess I don't know it's just I knew it was not a good thing I just knew it was it wasn't a good thing for a little kid like that to be playing around with something so that can be so dangerous. It can be dangerous for an adult. It can definitely be dangerous for a child. Or preteen, whatever, you know? It's just it was absurd and the whole ordeal was just really just the way that the school ended up handling it was just absurd. And I really wish the principal had been more involved with it because he was obviously taking the right route. But I don't know. I guess it's it's just like I said, it's just a story to, or you know, like just a tale of me, basically for the first time in my life, standing up for what I believe in, and like even though it didn't turn out the way I was hoping it would, um, it still made an impact on my life, and it showed me that I do have, you know, the courage to, to do that, to actually stand up for things, and and to actually you know, like guard my beliefs. And that was big. That was pretty big. So, I mean, I don't know, guys. I guess, moral of the story, even even if it seems scary, stand up for what you believe in. Fight for what's right! <laughs> um, in the comment section, have you ever have you ever had an experience like this where you, you know, you kind of had to make that decision to, to either stand up for what you believe in or, or just kind of, like, sit back and watch things happen? And, you know, if you if you did sit back and, and, and have to kind of just, like, let things unfold, like, I'm not blaming you. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's just, it happens, and sometimes we're not, you know, not quite brave enough yet, or maybe we don't know how to handle the situation. Like, I had to go to my mom to ask her to figure out how to handle the situation. Sometimes we don't know what to do. Sometimes we don't have the power to, to, to do anything. Or other, other times we just feel like we don't have the power, and maybe we do. So, um, have you ever had a situation like that? I don't know. Um, if you enjoyed this weird story, <laughs> leave a like. You know, I, you know I appreciate it. And, uh, if this is your first time joining me, I... Uh, go check out some of my other videos. I got other speed drawing videos. I'm playing Pokemon Art Academy right now. I've got some Attack on Maison, which... Uh, I'm not even gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> And maybe subscribe and stick around for, you know, future content like this and more. <laughs> Alright guys, I'll see you next time. I've dragged out this outro way too long. Bye!